Next question is from your examination, question number 11. And it talks about radiographic evaluation of the hip, which seems to be a very common topic in the self-assessment examination. And it talks about an oblique standing radiograph, a 65 degree oblique radiograph. This is the false profile radiograph, which projects the anterior superior joint space, the posterior inferior joint space, and shows the anterior coverage of the femoral head. So that's a very helpful evaluation, radiographic evaluation for the dysplastic hip as well as the hip with uh, impingement. Next is question number 27. This refers to a 38-year-old female with increasing left hip pain. She has had some response to non-operative measures, but persistent activity-related pain. Most notable in this question is that they outline her hip range of motion, which is markedly abnormal. So for a patient, 90 degrees of a female patient, 90 degrees of flexion is limited, and then no internal rotation is markedly uh, abnormal for a female patient. So that, given that history, you have to be thinking about hip impingement as our diagnosis. They provide uh, radiographs of the hip. On the left side, you see the AP pelvis. You see retroversion of the acetabulum bilaterally. So we have a crossover sign where the anterior acetabular rim crosses over the posterior rim consistent with acetabular retroversion. On the right side, you have a frog lateral radiograph where it really does not show a deformity of the femoral head neck junction. So given this uh, clinical picture and radiographs, we're thinking about hip impingement disease secondary to acetabular retroversion. So the correct answer is pincer type FAI. More specifically, it's pincer FAI from acetabular retroversion. So now we'll review the topic of femoral acetabular impingement. This is a becoming a more commonly uh, visited topic in terms of uh, questions. FAI can present early onset in the prearthritic hip with hip dysfunction and pain. It can also be associated with secondary osteoarthritis of the hip over time. There are two basic types of FAI, that is cam impingement, which is a femoral-based deformity where we have insufficient offset at the head neck junction. Secondly, we have pincer impingement, which is acetabular-based disease, where we have overcoverage of the femoral head from the acetabular deformity. Combined impingement is where we have deformities on both sides of the joint. We have acetabular overcoverage combined with femoral head neck offset deformity, creating a mixed or combined impingement picture. In terms of clinical presentation, these patients tend to present with groin pain. It tends to be exacerbated by activity or hip flexion, repetitive hip flexion. Very importantly, physical examination, they tend to have restricted range of motion, and specifically, internal rotation in flexion is limited. Uh, really, now we consider 15 degrees or less uh, insufficient internal rotation at 90 degrees of flexion. The anterior impingement test is very helpful in terms of making this diagnosis. That is when the involved extremity is flexed to 90 degrees, adducted 10 degrees, and then internally rotated. In the setting of hip impingement, most commonly restricted internal rotation is noted and it reproduces the patient's groin pain. In terms of imaging, we want radiographs uh, to give us a comprehensive uh, look at the hip in both the, a the AP and the lateral planes. Uh, this slide demonstrates the false profile radiograph. So that's a 25 degree oblique radiograph that uh, depicts the anterior coverage of the femoral head, the anterior superior joint space, which we really don't see on the AP pelvis, and then the posterior inferior joint space, again, which we don't see on the AP pelvis. We also want to get at least one lateral view to project the anterior and or anterior lateral head and neck junction. Uh, which gives us a sense of the femoral head neck junction anatomy and the presence of a, a head neck offset deformity. So this is an AP radiograph here uh, demonstrating the asphericity of the femoral head or traditionally referred to as a pistol grip deformity. 
So in this radiograph on your right, we have advanced osteoarthritis of the hip, secondary to hip impingement. You can appreciate the prominence or lack of offset along the superlateral aspect of the femoral head or femoral head neck junction consistent with cam impingement. This is an AP radiograph that shows a retroversion of the acetabulum as we had in our case example. Uh, the patient, the red line is the anterior acetabular rim. The blue line is the posterior acetabular rim. And you can see crossover, the crossover sign as the anterior rim projects lateral to the posterior rim, representing acetabular retroversion and overcoverage of the anterior superior femoral head. In terms of specific measures for hip impingement, on the femoral side, the alpha angle is a common measure referred to in the literature. This is an angle subtended by the axis of the femoral neck, and then a third point at the, po at the, the area where the femoral head loses its sphericity as it uh, goes into the femoral neck. So the angle subtended by those two lines represents the alpha angle. Historically, uh, values in the mid-40s to higher were thought to be abnormal. More recently, values in the, the low 50s to mid-50s and above are thought to be abnormal and potentially consistent with femoral-sided impingement. The head-neck offset ratio is another specific measure of the femoral head-neck anatomy. Um, this ratio <clears throat> consists of the perpendicular distance from the anterior aspect of the femoral head to the anterior aspect of the femoral neck in line with the neck axis. So that distance divided by the diameter of the femoral head is the head-neck offset ratio. And ratios less than 0.17 are considered to be consistent with the diagnosis of CAM impingement. In terms of 3D imaging, the MRI is the best modality. It gives us a, a better uh, look at the morphology of the hip. We can also assess the acetabular labrum and the articular cartilage of the hip. CT scan is most commonly used for more complex deformities and preoperative surgical planning. The MR also rules out other diagnoses about the hip that may be associated with um, uh, FAI morphology. In terms of treatment, again, we have non-operative measures, basically activity restriction, uh, anti-inflammatory medicines, physical therapy, which should focus on strengthening, not range of motion. If the patient fails non-surgical treatment, then uh, surgical treatment should be considered. Hip arthroscopy has really become the mainstay treatment for hip impingement disease. Certainly for focal or accessible disease, uh, we can uh, access and treat these uh, diseases very effectively with arthroscopic management. And to date, the literature supports arthroscopy as effective as open procedures. Open procedures uh, today are more commonly used for more complex non-focal FAI disease patterns. The surgical dislocation of the hip gives us wide exposure of the hip joint, and we cor can correct deformities on both the acetabular and femoral sides. The periacetabular osteotomy has a specific indication in hip impingement surgery. This is for the treatment of major acetabular retroversion. So the periacetabular osteotomy can be used to antivert the acetabulum in the setting of major acetabular retroversion. Total hip arthroplasty is reserved for the patient that has FAI, but has significant secondary osteoarthritis of the hip. This is most commonly seen in patients as they get into their 50s or over 60 years of age. In terms of our arthroscopic techniques, uh, the goals here are to decompress the impingement lesions, uh, which may, may be on both sides of the joint, so acetabular rim decompression as well as head neck offset decompression combined with work in the central compartment of usually labor refixation and management of articular cartilage problems.
In terms of open treatment, a limited anterior approach is one option for focal uh, hip impingement disease. That gives good access to the joint and the anterior lateral aspect of the femoral head neck junction. More powerful procedure is the true open surgical dislocation of the hip. This gives wide exposure to the proximal femur and the acetabulum. Uh, this procedure is performed through a trochanteric flip osteotomy, anterior dislocation of the hip, preservation of the medial femoral circumflex artery, and again provides wide exposure cor for correction of more complex hip impingement patterns involving the proximal femur and the acetabulum. Complications with both arthroscopic and open treatments are relatively low in the neighborhood of 1 to 2 percent. Femoral neck fracture is, is very uncommon and one has to do an over resection of the neck greater than 30 percent of the neck diameter to put the hip at risk for fracture. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.